We are about to learn about logarithmic functions. First of all, you will notice I have a graph of y or f of x is equal to a to the x. This is our exponential graph. You should notice that from a previous lecture video. And this does pass the horizontal line test which means if I can pass any horizontal line through it at any point it is only touching that line just one time. So it does pass the horizontal line test which means it has an inverse and the inverse of this exponential function is a logarithmic function. Let's learn about them. We have this fancy definition of the logarithmic function and it's saying that the logarithm base a of x is the exponent to which the base a must be raised to to give x. Wow, what does that mean? So what it means is the logarithm base a of x is equal to y. This a is the base. It is the same as the base over here in this exponential function. A logarithm is just an exponent. The logarithm base a of x is equal to y. Would you see this y is just the exponent of this exponential function? We need to learn how to convert back and forth from exponential function to logarithmic function. Now you can use whichever method works best for you. I use the loop-t-loop. -loop. If I want to convert from logarithmic form to exponential form, I will take a, raise it to the y, and that's going to equal x. And that is my exponential function. Okay, it is important to understand that the logarithm base a of x is an exponent. So once again, the logarithm of base a of x is equal to y, which is just this exponent. So I have several problems here. On the left, they are in a logarithmic form. On the right, they are in exponential form. Let's try to convert back and forth and see if it's true. The first one, the logarithm base 10 of 100,000 equals 5. I'm going to change this to exponential form by using a loop-t-loop. -loop. 10 to the 5th should equal 100,000. Yes, that's exactly the way they wrote it. And it is true, 10 to the 5th is 100,000. 2 to the third is equal to 8. Yes, that is how it is written in exponential form. And it's true. 2 to the third is 8. Oh, this looks a little bit trickier. 2 to the negative 3 is equal to 1 eighth. That's how it's written. 2 to the negative third is equal to 1 eighth. And just to refresh your memory, 2 to the negative 3 is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the third, which is 1 over 8. One more to go. 5 to the r is equal to s. And in exponential form, it is written like that. So if I'm in logarithmic form and I want to convert to exponential form, I can use my formula or I can use the loop-t-loop. -loop. Okay, we do need to memorize these properties of logarithms. The logarithm base a of 1 equals 0. You need to know that if you ever have the log of 1, I don't care what is down there, but the log of 1 is always going to equal 0. 
So if I have the logarithm, no matter what the base is, but the log of 1 is going to equal 0. If we wanted to check it with a loop-de-loop, -loop, log of anything at all down here, well, I would do a to the what, and they have 0, is equal to 1. And that's true. Anything to the 0 power is 1. The second property, log base a of a equals 1. Let's check it with the loop-de-loop. -loop. Sure enough, a to the first is equal to a. So if the base, so if I have the log base a of a, if these are the same thing, it is just 1. Property number three is very similar to this. Property three says if I have the log base a of a to the x, it will equal x. These match up. So the answer is just right there. If you wanted to check it with the loop-de-loop, -loop, a to the x is equal to a to the x. And the last property you need to be familiar with, if I have a to the log base a of x, I can simply look at that. If these match up, the answer is just right there. And those are the properties of logarithms that we need to learn. So let's talk a little bit about the graphs of these functions. First of all, look at the exponential function graph. y equals a to the x. We graphed this a lot on a previous video. y equals a to the x. Look at the point it goes through, 0, 1. Because remember, if x is 0, no matter what you raise 0 to, y will always be 1. Also notice the logarithmic graph. This is the first video that we've talked about logarithms in, but y is equal to the logarithm base a of x. Now, do you notice something? Instead of 0, 1, this goes through the point 1, 0. But remember in a previous chapter, we talked about inverses, and you could just switch the x and y. So this point, 0, 1, well, on its inverse, there will be a point 1, 0. Something else I would like you to notice about these graphs, we've talked about them being inverses. Do you notice how the graphs are reflected over the line y equals x? We have learned that in a previous chapter, that the graphs of inverses are the reflection over the diagonal line y equals x. And the last thing I want you to notice, can you tell me the domain of the exponential graph? Those are my x's. And the domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity. This blue line does go on and on and on we should have an arrow on that. So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And what about the range? We don't have the range in this negative area. The range does not start until 0. So the range starts at 0, does not include 0 though, and it goes to infinity. Now let's look at the graph, y is equal to the logarithm base a of x. Once again, these should have arrows on the end that go on and on and on. What is the domain of that graph? What are the x's? Well, I look at the x's from the left to the right, and I am not touching the red graph. I am not touching the red graph. I am not touching the red graph. The domain on the red graph does not start until 0, but does not include 0, and then it goes to infinity. So for the red graph, 
which is the logarithm base a of x, a logarithmic graph. The domain is 0 to infinity, and the range is negative infinity to positive infinity. So notice these inverses. Notice the domain and the range of the exponential graph in blue. Notice the domain and the range of the logarithmic graph that is in red. Let's evaluate some logarithmic expressions. I'm going to use my properties of logarithms to come to very quick answers here. Logarithm base 5 of 5 to the second. The answer is simply 2. Do you notice how these match up? So I can very simply look at my answer and see it right there. Those properties are pretty important to learn. Let's try another one. Logarithm base 2 of 32. That may be a little bit harder. I may have to think a little bit more. I really do wish these two things matched up because then I could use one of my properties of logarithms. So I'm going to have the logarithm base 2. Do you believe that 32 is the same thing as 2 to the 5th? Now, 2 to the 5th is 32. So instead of writing 32, I'm going to write 2 to the 5th. Now those match up. The answer is simply 5. Let's try another one. The logarithm base 3 of 1 27th. Whoa. Can we get that to match up? Well, do you believe that this is the logarithm base 3? 1 over 27. Do you believe that 27 is the same thing as 3 to the 3rd? 3 times 3 times 3? Do you also believe that 3 to the 3rd, I can move it from the denominator to the numerator, but I can't do that just because it's my birthday. If I move it to the top, instead of 3 to the 3rd, it's going to be 3 to the negative 3. I moved this 3 to the 3rd from the denominator to the numerator. That is cool as long as you change the sign of the exponent. Well, would you look at there? I did get these to match up. The answer is right there. It is negative 3. Okay, now a little new type of problem. The logarithm base 2 of x equals 5. What is x? They said use the definition of the logarithmic function to find x. If I ever see log on one side, this is in logarithmic form. I would like to change this to exponential form in order to work it out. Well, you know what I call this. Oh yeah, the loop-de-loop. -loop. This is the same thing as 2 to the 5th equals x. And the rest is elementary. What's 2 to the 5th? That will be 32. x must be 32. Another problem. Logarithm base x of 6 equals 1 half. <whistles> what should x equal? Well, this I see the word log on one side. I am going to change this to exponential form, a.k.a. a loop-de-loop, -loop, to find my x. This is the same thing as x to the 1 half equals 6. Well, now I have to solve that. I don't want x to the 1 half. I want x, just x. I want x to the first. I don't want x to the 1 half. Well, I'm going to raise this side to the second, or to the 2 over 1. I'm doing that because I know that a power to a power you multiply, and I know that 1 over 2 times 2 over 1 will give me just x. So once again, in order to get rid of this exponent, I am raising it to the reciprocal because I know a power to a power you multiply 1 half times 2 over 1 is just 1. I'll have x to the first. But if you raise the left side to the 2 over 1, you have to do it to the other side. It's not your birthday. So on the left side, x to the 1 half to the second, that will simply be x to the first. 
And on the right side, 6 to the 2 over 1. Of course, 2 over 1 is just 2. So 6 squared is 36. Let's try one more. Logarithm base 4 of 2 equals x. These don't completely match up, so I can't just look at them as easily. I'll change this to exponential form, also known as the loop-de-loop. -loop. So that will be 4 to the x equals 2. Well, now some of you may just want to look at this. How did I get from 4 to 2 when it has to do with the exponents? Some people may realize you're going to take the square root of 4, and that will give you 2. Now remember, the square root of 4, that is the same thing as 4 to the 1 half. Or you can say 4 to the 1 half. Remember, that is the same thing as the square root of 4 to the first. So some of y'all may be able to look at that and know I'm going to take the square root of 4, and that's how I'll get 2. So x, this x up here must be 1 half. To you, some of you may think that's just a tad bit too difficult, so you would rather work it out. So I'm going to try to get these bases the same. Do you believe that 4 is the same thing as 2 to the second? 4 is 2 to the second. And then don't forget, you have the x out here. So 2 to the 2x is equal to 2. Well, if this 2 is equal to two, this 2, and this is 2 to the first, then my common sense tells me that this exponent must equal that one. We should know that 2x must equal 1, divide both sides by 2, and x will equal 1 half. Just what I speculated that I would get. That one is a little bit harder. We will study that more when we work on logarithmic equations. But as of right now, 4 to the x equals 2. I should know that I have to take the square root of 4 to get 2. And the square root of 4 is the same thing as 4 to the 1 half. x should be 1 half. Once again, we'll talk more about that when we're doing other logarithmic equations. Okay, if I want to graph by hand logarithmic equations, your first thought may be that this is pretty hard. But just choose your x's wisely. I want to graph f of x equals the logarithm base 2 of x. Base 2. Well, guess what? I'm going to pick all of my x's that can be a base 2. Example, I'm going to let x equal 2 because the logarithm of base 2 of 2, well, it's simply 1. I'm going to also let x equal 4. Why? Because that would be the logarithm base 2 of 4, which I can write as 2 squared. I can get my answer easily. I'm going to let my x equal 8. Why? Because that would be the logarithm base 2 of 8, which is the same thing as 2 to the third. Those match up. My answer is right there. So let's look at this graph. So this is the graph of the logarithm base 2 of x. So when x was 8, the y, or the function, was 3. 8, 3. When x was 4, or 2 squared, the answer was 2. And I can continue plugging these in and plotting those points. So a few more definitions so you can be become familiar with logarithms. A logarithm that has a base 10 is called a common logarithm. So sometimes they omit the base. So if you ever see the log of x, you should know that it's really the log base 10 of x. And another definition. If I have a logarithm with base e that we will have to use more in calculus, what are we doing now? We are learning how to work with E. You will learn more about E when you are taking calculus. But this is called a natural logarithm. And it's denoted by ln. If you ever see the ln of x or natural log of x, you should know that that does mean the same thing as 
logarithms in base e. So that's the same thing as the log base e of x. And one more set of properties, but these properties are not for logarithms. They are for natural logarithms, but they work just like our other properties do. The first one says the ln of 1 is equal to 0. Well, remember the natural log, that's the same thing as the log base e of 1. Well, didn't I tell you earlier that I don't care what's down here, but if you take the log of 1, it will be 0. This would be our exponent. e to the what will give me 1. In order to get 1, you would always have to have 0 over there. So the natural log of 1 is 0. Our second property, the natural log of e is 1. Well, remember, natural log is the same thing as log base e. So the natural log of e, yes, is equal to 1. These match up. It's just like a 1's up here. So the natural log of e is 1. Some students like to think of it as the natural log and e canceling each other out. And no, we are using our property. The natural log is log base e, which is why it works like that. Number three, very similar property. The natural log of e to the x is equal to just whatever is up there. So that would be x. But remember, natural log is really just the log base e. And so since those match up, it's whatever's there. And the last one, we have e to the natural log of x. Once again, we have e and it's raised to the natural log of x, which will simply be x. So, are we having fun yet? You tell me if I have a logarithm base heart of heart raised to the star, what is that equal to? You are correct. It is equal to star.